Christopher Reed, team leader at CSULA EcoCar 2, explains how universities are selected for this project sponsored by General Motors and the Department of Energy to teach engineering students how to maximize performance and efficiencies. Well, EcoCar 2, you have to be selected for these competitions. And they selected 15 universities. Uh, and the process, from what I know on our side, is that you have to apply for this competition as if it was a grant and you have to write a proposal and you have to be selected and um, the Department of Energy, um, Argonne National Labs is the one that does a lot of the selecting. They're the neutral party in this and um, this is our first time being selected and like I said we're one of 15 universities in North America that were selected for this and so it's, it's kind of an honor to be a part of a project like this. It's, um, it's not an easy one, it's a big project so we're kind of glad to be on this. Now every team is given the same car so that's the the baseline and you're told to make it better to get uh, less emissions and uh, less dependency on fossil fuels. So we actually look at uh, the different fuels that the competition says we can use and this is mainly because um, these are the fuels that they'll supply at the competition for us. Obviously we come with crazier ones but if that won't be available to us at the competition then that's a problem. Now we look at each one of those different fuels and we look at actually what we call the well to wheel um, analysis, not only what the emissions are coming out of the car, but what are the emissions in producing that fuel. And when we looked at that, we came up with uh, E85 as a fuel that we wanted to use because of that lower emissions from the well all the way to the wheel. Uh, we decided to also make it a plug-in um, because electricity was also lower on those emissions and it would give our, um, our users more usability. So they'll be able to run on electricity for up to 40 miles. They'll be able to run on E85 even if they run out of uh, electricity. And because it's a flex fuel, that means they can also put gasoline in it. So when they pull up to the station, if there's gasoline, E85, they can run either one that they want. The car will compensate for that. As well as if they can park at a charging station, they can take advantage of that. So it really gives us the most flexibility in our architecture.